Hi everyone. Um, I'll, I'll give my give my own introduction as well. Uh, so, as um, you mentioned, I am a, the research lead and co-founder at Tattle, and we're a civic tech organization in India that builds tools and data sets to respond to inaccurate and harmful content, uh, so i.e. fake news and uh, hate speech, right? And we do a bunch of different things. We build games, we write scrapers, but we also build machine learning tools to work with multilingual and multimedia content of the sorts you find um, on social media in India. Uh, open source is central to our work. Before we were a formal organization in 2019, me and my co-founder, we were doing this as an open source project on the side. Uh, for us, we defined um, openness as a core value because we felt that there was a lack of tools in India that would even enable you know, basic research of the sorts that we were seeing um, in uh, the US, in Europe, for English languages. And so we really wanted to build tools that would sort of add, uh, become like a multiplicative effect so that more and more uh, people could do <laughs> research um, on social media in India. Um, and at many points in the last four years, uh, as we have tried different um, machine learning driven experiments, I have paused and asked my teammates, uh, can we justifiably say that our work is open source? Uh, this is even in the pre-large language model days, because for a while now, machine learning development has meant that we have relied on pre-trained models, right? Um, so for example, we have a, um, a analysis engine that we call Feluda. Uh, that's the sort of visualization on the left is what Feluda has produced. Um, and uh, Feluda relies on ResNet, and it relies also on, uh, for example, the Google Cloud Vision API. Um, Uli, which is another project, uh, which is on detecting gendered abuse in Indian languages, uh, that relies on a BERT-based model. And sometimes what happens is that you're building an application on top of an existing model. Like, that's where machine learning is. Um, and sometimes, you know, you're actually able to fine-tune models. Very rarely, I mean, there are very, very few organizations right now who that have the capacity to actually build what are now called foundation models, right? So we're all actually um, intervening or building applications at different layers of the um, sort of machine learning development stack, so to say. Uh, and if you don't look carefully under the hood, you might convince yourself that you are actually building in the open when uh, um, some of the building blocks uh, rely on possibly proprietary data, but also proprietary tech. Experientially, what I also know is that um, in our post, uh, past four to five years, onboarding people on machine learning projects has actually been very steep. So while, let's say, on certain front-end or uh, web apps, you will see people you know, picking up issues as a weekend hobby project, uh, you don't see that with machine learning typically, right? So people have to spend a lot of time understanding the overall goal, the data, um, the existing model, and uh, from, a mis uh, from a sort of perspective of getting diversity of contributions, um, or uh, you know, just, yeah, like having people of different backgrounds contribute, I, I'm not sure that just having our code and documentation on GitHub um, is, is uh, turning out to be sufficient. So our experience and how what has happened over the last four to five years is actually tied to how AI or machine learning has been evolving over the last few years, right? So um, pre-trained models have become larger and larger. We now, as I mentioned, have these foundation models or base models that enable downstream applications across a variety of domains. Uh, what has also happened is that more and more of these machine learning developments have moved into the industry. So for example, um, if you see this graph, in 2014, uh, so the blue dots, the dark uh, sort of, yeah, like there are lots of blue dots, but uh, there are these blue dots that are actually models that are being developed in academia. And in 2014, mo almost all the models are being developed in academia. By 2022, you see a lot of these models becoming purple, um, which is to say that these are industry collaborations. So the models are becoming larger, um, and most of them are actually moving into the industry. Um, so while nearly all the innovation in machine learning in 2014 was um, in the open, we now see critical, um, you know, sort of critical AI tools being released under a restrictive model. Um, so Again, this is uh, these are all graphs I've b borrowed from reports and other papers. But uh, again, if you see, like in 2018, nearly nothing at the bottom of the chart is um, is closed, and then as you start moving up the branch, you actually see that more and more of these models are being released under a restrictive license. Um, now, this chart actually is using this binary of either something, either a machine learning model is open or closed. But what I'm actually saying is.